President Joe Biden set his sights on an ambitious new climate commitment this Earth Day. The president promises to cut greenhouse gas emissions in half by 2030. He made that announcement during the White House's Earth Day summit. 40 world leaders met virtually today to discuss ways to curb greenhouse gases. Now, President Biden says combating climate change is a, quote, moral imperative. Meeting this moment is about more than preserving our planet. It's also about providing a better future for all of us. Well, the White House says this can happen by making energy efficient upgrades to buildings, but the president will need some support from Congress to get this done. Lawmakers need to pass President Biden's $2 trillion infrastructure plan to launch those changes. Now, according to a new CBS News poll, most Americans agree with President Biden. 58% or 56 rather percent of Americans believe climate change needs to be addressed immediately. One in 10 people think it can wait a few years, while others say no action needs to be taken at all. So here's the big question. Is President Biden's goal realistic? Joining me right now is Mark Jacobson, a professor of civil and environmental engineering at Stanford University. Mark, thank you so much for being here with us. All right, yeah, you heard the president's goal there. You're talking nine years from now. Is it possible? Yes, it's technically and economically possible. Whether we have the willpower is a different question. Hmm. I mean, we do need this humongous transition within nine years, at least 80%, well, 50% reduction of greenhouse gases is like an 80% reduction of change of the energy infrastructure to clean renewable energy. And this can be done. I mean, there's plenty of wind and solar and the cost of wind and solar have come down so much. Uh, storage has come down a lot. Electric vehicles are dropping in price. Uh, building energy efficiency improvements are low cost. So there are a lot of things that can be done. There's a lot of low hanging fruit uh, to allow us to get to a large, a large amount of this transition. A lot of low hanging fruit, like what? Well, especially renewable energy, like wind and solar in particular, there's a, there's a lot of uh, sunny areas in the United States uh, that where solar, solar is half the cost of natural gas right now. And so is onshore wind, at utility scale solar that is. And so there's a huge amount of, of potential for both of those. Huge potential for electric vehicles. That will help a lot because transportation is a big portion of greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, there's a big uh, chance to increase energy efficiency in buildings, transition to heat pumps uh, hmm. for air conditioning, air heating, and water heating. I mean, most energy use in buildings is heating and cooling, and we can electrify that. You know, the key is we need to get rid of gas in homes and transition to electric homes. That'll save people a huge amount of money because. An electric heat pump, for example, for air heating and air conditioning is one fourth the cost as a gas heater for the fuel. Yeah. And, you know, not too much difference in terms of the actual cost of the, of the now, equipment. Now, Mark, I hear you talking about that there. Now, majority of Americans agree with you, agree with the president and say climate change is an issue that needs to be addressed right now. But you saw a large number of people, they don't seem to be concerned right now. They have other issues to worry about. So why should they be worried about this right now? Well, those people don't need to be worried about it, but they will benefit from a transition. I mean, there, if you actually ask, ask, ask people a different question, how many people want to transition to clean renewable energy, I think those numbers go up to about 80%. In fact, there have been polls in the US, over 80% of people do want to transition to clean renewable energy. So you get fewer people who agree that climate change is an important issue than you do people who want to transition to renewable energy because renewable energy will give people more jobs, It'll uh, save money. It allows people to uh, create their own power in a lot of cases and more energy security. So there are a lot of reasons people like renewable energy, even though they don't believe in climate change. Yeah. Now, you said this seems to be economically feasible. So what can we do in our daily lives to to uh, make a change to address this issue? Well, certainly with, it's new, with new buildings, it's easy. You just all new buildings should be fully electric, no gas on the properties. Uh, use heat pumps for electric uh, for air heating, water heating, air conditioning, uh, use LED lights, we weatherize homes to reduce leaks, uh, go to electric induction cooktops. There are even heat pump dryers now, energy efficiency, ap efficient appliances. Now, for those who have existing homes, uh, changing out their appliances when they retire, or if you have enough um, capital built the money right now, you can switch out right now because you'll save a lot of money in fuel costs. If you're in an apartment, what you can do is there are a lot of uh, states that have what are called community choice aggregation utilities who will procure 100% renewable electricity for you at virtually the same cost as fossil electricity. So right. even if you can't put solar on your own roof, 
you can still go to 100% renewable energy. You can get energy efficiency, efficient appliances if your landlord allows you. A landlord should do this for all their tenants as well. All right. Mark Jacobson, let's have this conversation again in 2030, okay? And let's see where uh, we hopefully are. Hopefully before then. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Take care.